A whole class of identities that before required an ad hoc proof. And sometimes we had some conjectures also before. Now, in one stroke, became provable by computer. So it was exciting for five minutes. Once it's decidable, it's boring. You cannot publish the paper 13 times 15 equals 14 square minus 1. It's no longer publishable because by now there exist algorithms for deciding it routinely. So it becomes routine. So this is no longer exciting. How to make it exciting? So after WZ came along, every such statement was no longer only a priori. It was also a priori. It was a priori. Was a priori, a priori trivial. We know there exists a proof. Of course, maybe the computer is not big enough, it's very complicated, but at least in principle, there exists a proof. So, automatically, it becomes from interesting to boring. How to get the interest back is to do things that are not a priori decidable, that for which you don't know beforehand whether you will succeed. If you do something and you know 100%, you guarantee it. If you only invest in, uh, in bonds, oh, <laughs> then you never have an exciting life. You have a relaxing life, but you won't have an exciting life. You have to take chances. When you want to have an exciting life, you have to undertake things that are not guaranteed a priori to prove. One example of a beautiful use of computer is the famous four color theorem. The four color theorem has been open for many years, since 1853 to 1890. It was a big open problem. There was a, so there was conjecture. Then it became the theorem between 1891 and 1901 roughly. And then you can contact it again because you cannot trust humans and you cannot trust the police and they don't do a good job and the proof uh, by one guy called Campy who was a, not, a, not, not a stupid guy, he was a treasurer of the Royal Society, uh, very qualified, maybe that's why I was afraid to, to look at this paper too closely because he was a treasurer, so <laughs> much to get on the best side. Anyway, and some guy called Hewood did found a gap. And it became four color conjecture again between 1901 and 1976. And then, as you probably know, Apple, Ken Apple, and Wolfgang Haken found, together with a computer, using 400 hours of computer time in 1976, that is three hours of computer time today. Uh, a conclusive proof of this. What was their approach? People believe that computers can only be used to do routine things, to check five in many cases. But this was a proof strategy to prove it for every graph, every map is every map in the plane is colorable with four colors. Four colors for five. And they had an approach. What was the approach? To come up with a finite object, a, a set of uh, unreducible, sorry, reducible, sorry, a set of reducible and unavoidable configurations. Let me tell you briefly what it means. They came up with about 1,000 and something set of partial maps. And they said, suppose that there is a map that is four colorable. That uh, you, 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 not four colorable. That you need more than four colors. Then it must contain one of the following list. So this set of 1,004 uh, map, uh, uh, map segments is unavoidable. You cannot avoid it. Like in, the, in this alphabet, uh, you cannot 
a void uh, is a ABC amongst the letter in the first uh, in the first letter of uh, this guy's name, either A or B or C or D or E or F or up to, to Z. And indeed, you have to go by W indeed one of them. So the set A through Z is unavoidable for the first letter. And the set AA to ZZ, 26 square, is unavoidable for the second letter. So analogously, they came up with a set of unavoidable. And they also asked the computer to check for each and every one on this long list. This is invisible. If there is a map that is four color board, that is a smaller map. And then you go and down, 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 you sleep until you get the empty map. And obviously, the empty map is covered with four colors. Four colors suffice, even one color suffice to color the empty map. So that was a great. But it was not clear a priori that such a set exists. So they taught the computer how to use heuristics and step by step dynamically construct such an unavoidable set and see if it's a usable, you know, the usable. So you if not, it's a finite set. I mean, such a set exists, an abstract set of such things exists, but it's a Not a priori. That was a nice thing that he. Oh, uh, just, it's defined to be the set of maps such that this, this occurs, isn't that? Yeah, no, no. He said, his point was yeah. there could have been a, a, such a set, but it might have been in. Yeah, you're, you're, oh, it's so a finite set. But it doesn't exist. He doesn't believe it only exists. exists. So, so, set, so set has been, for this lecture, means finite set. For me. Okay. Yeah. All the sets. <laughs> okay. Make anything a finite set. Okay. Then, <laughs> this is not the XMO, it's obvious. It's a redundancy. Finite set is a redundancy. <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah. Uh, so, that was the first example, uh, a one nice example. And more complicated, capitalist conjecture, also use similar philosophy. <coughs> lots of computer time, a lot of pre-processing by humans by Thomas Hales um, and collaborators. But now let me go back to the holonomic untouch. Recently, my collaborators and I, and let me mention them, very smart people, young computer wizards, Manuel. Carlos and Christoph Kutran, two Austrian, very smart people, also great computer wizards, and used the holonomic ansatz in a not a priori trivial way, in a not a priori decidable way. We started something that a priori we did not know is going to succeed. And in many other cases it's possible we would have failed. But we lucked out and it worked out. So let me tell you briefly what are these exciting statements. Oh, by the way, a very good book to get started in the traditional experimental math is a book by Baldwin and Bailey, Experimental Mathematics, that I'm recommending. Because Eddie is videotaping it and going to put it in YouTube and then I'm going to charge and I'm begging for this comment. <laughs> 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 I'm making a thousand money! And if I ever have time, my students have time for post exam, they owe me. <laughs> so let me tell you the following intriguing conjecture that everybody in enumeration, including some of the, smarter, the smartest people, could not do. And they try very, very hard. Let's walk in the plane. You have the m-axis and the n-axis. Now, if you only allow steps east and north, it's not hard to prove, you don't need a computer, that the number of ways of going in Manhattan to the corner of M's Avenue and N's Street is exactly this, if you don't cheat and go on one way. So this nice, close form, and easy to prove even for a stupid human. But now let's walk, not only, suppose now you know east and west 
north and south.